I'm going to be very quick. I just want to welcome everyone and uh, the large number of people who are here indicates how important everyone feels quite rightly the questions of websites and social media presence are. So you've got people who are far more knowledgeable than me to talk to you and I'll pass straight over to them. Thank you. Um, and um, I um, just want to emphasise uh, that websites do matter terrifically. Um, let me just explain some of the reasons. Um, let's say somebody is interested in playing bridge in your town or village. Uh, the chances are they're going to pick up their mobile phone. Um, they're going to use uh, type or maybe voice search and they're going to say play bridge in Wantage or bridge club in Wantage or something like that. Um, and probably the next thing to come up will be the club website if, as is the case, there is a Wantage bridge club. That web page is the shop window for the club. Uh, that inquirer will be forming an immediate impression of what the club is like from what they see. Will they be made welcome? Is it a high standard? Is it friendly to beginners? Could they learn bridge there? Could they find a partner? Can they come without a partner? When does it meet? What's it cost? All those questions. Uh, and even for the members of the club, the website is super important. Some members only play occasionally. They may have similar questions to the newcomer. When can I next play? Can I come without a partner? How many tables is the club getting at the moment? Thank you. All visitors to a website will also be getting an impression of the club based on what they see. Does the club look modern? Mm -hmm. I've lost sound. Has anybody else? He was yeah, muted for a while. Sound. Right. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. Hearing okay. We lost you for a minute, Tim. Uh, apologies. Yeah. Do don't suffer in silence. Um, do say if any any technical problems, we need to fix them. So just uh, emphasising that visitors to a website will be forming an impression about the club based on what they see. Um, things like, does the club look modern and organised? Does it look friendly? Does it look well run? Um, it may happen that the club is in fact fantastic yeah, friendly, yeah, well managed. <laughs> but if the website doesn't accept <laughs> that, who knows, the club might not get another chance. Okay. <laughs> the kinds of things that put people off are out of date information like come to our event in November 21 or web pages that look broken with chopped off, chopped off pictures or overlapping text or lack of basic information like where the club meets or the schedule of sessions, or sites that just look very dated as if they've not seen much attention since 1995. There is another matter to think about. What about when there's more than one bridge club in an area? Or if the person is searching not so much for a bridge, but for things to do in Wantage, will they find your website or some other site? Some of you may know the term search engine optimization. This is the subject of how visible a website is in search engines. It's very much a long, how long is a piece of string type of question. If your site is for Wantage Bridge Club and someone types in Wantage Bridge Club, the club site absolutely should come pretty high in the rank ranking. But if they type something a bit less specific, like Play Bridge in Wantage or uh, Play Bridge in Berkshire, it's all a bit less certain. What about things to do in Wantage? That's less certain still. How can you get your site visible in the search rankings for more queries? Search engines do have kind of secret algorithms, but a lot of this is just common sense. The search engines look at how popular a website is based on what other sites link to it, as well as their own figures on how often searchers click links to the site. Yes, it is a bit circular. What this means is that any work you put in to make the club or county website interesting and high quality will benefit your search engine visibility and almost certainly over the long term bring more people to the club. It's also a great idea to include in the wording on the site the kinds of things that people might be likely to search for. Looking for things to do in Wantage? Why not play Bridge in Wantage at our friendly bridge club? If you say that in the text then maybe when people search for it then they'll find your site. It's important to realise that even if someone gets information indirectly, maybe from things like Hey Google or Siri or Alexa, or from a search page without even visiting the site, or even from chat GPT, if you want to be really cutting edge, that information most often does come from the website. 
it's the source material for a lot of ways in which people discover information. So as the official page for your club or county information association, it has a lot of authority. It really pays to use it to the fullest. There is another aspect to this, which affects the entire bridge community and our future. Your club website is not just a shop window for bridging your location. It's also one small part of a bigger shop window for the game of bridge in England. There are maybe 900 bridge websites for clubs in England, not all of them EBU clubs, as well as other non-bridge websites and also Facebook pages. Collectively, this is a substantial web presence and all the things that apply to an individual site also apply to this broader amalgamation. Does the game of bridge look modern, approachable, easy to find, a place to learn and play? Of course, we have no control over where someone ends up if they search the internet for information about bridge. We do think though that the more we can do between us to have a strong web presence that presents the game of bridge in an attractive light, the better off we will all be as it helps to promote and support the game long into the future. So the EBU um, realizes that the game of bridge urgently needs new players and younger players. The EBU would love to see every bridge website guide inquirers towards learning the game. And ideally, this is for classes run at your own club or classes run nearby. But if a club wants to start teaching, we want to help them. And we also now provide a fallback for clubs unable to offer teaching on their own. This means your site can link either to your own classes or to the EBU fallback. Um, so we are promoting your club on our website. We have club and teacher directories. Um, and um, that hopefully will also help your search engine optimization as we link to your website. Um, and you can control the message uh, that comes up on this site yourself. And also the session information in our directories comes from BridgeWeb. So there's a link there. Uh, but we also have a find a teacher form, especially aimed at learners. Uh, and this is a, a draft form. It's not live yet, but it shows what we're thinking about. Someone can come to our site and just enter basic details if they want to learn Bridge. When can they play? You know, can they do want to learn online or face to face? And we will then have our teachers get back to them with opportunities for them to learn. So we would like to see clubs um, have a, a learn bridge now message, even it on their website, even if they're not teaching themselves. Um, and uh, the kind of thing we're thinking of, we've got a, a, a ready to go panel that you can drop into a bridge website. Um, you can modify this um, with your own message or you can put it in so as we provide it, uh, you can change the links. But we just think that every bridge site that has a learn bridge now message is helping us to promote the game and it will help us all as a bridge community. Um, now, just a few quick tips about um, your, your website. We've got some very specific information on bridge webs later on this morning. Um, but I thought... Um, um, I would just highlight a few things. Um, so I think step one uh, for your website is identify the key messages you want to communicate. Um, and I've got some hints as to some of the things that we think might be key messages, but your club might be different. Um, so just things like, is the club active? What's the schedule of events? Where are the results? Where does the club play? How can I learn bridge again? Um, and it's a great idea to put those key messages or links to them what we call above the fold, which means it's visible without having to sort of navigate the site. Um, so that's the first tip. The second tip is to test on mobile. Um, every single web browser out there has got a facility, if it's on a desktop PC, for testing your site, what it looks like on a mobile screen. Um, you don't need to understand all the technical details. Um, on, a, on, on a desktop, you just press F12, and then you select the thing that says device emulation and you will see what the site looks like on a smartphone. Uh, that can be a bit of a shock, um, but it is really important because a lot of people um, actually, that's how they use the web now. They use it on their phone. They don't have um, desktop PCs any longer. Uh, so third tip, attention spans are short. Um, what this means for a website is try and keep things short and punchy. Um, and I've got some tips here about just using short sentences, um, cutting out any words that don't add to the meaning. Um, pictures are great, um, as long as they're good pictures, crop them to show the subject um, really clearly. 
um, and ruthlessly purge anything out of date. Um, that really is important for people to have a good impression of your site. What about the design of the site? Well, not many of us are fantastic web designers, but we shouldn't worry about that. Um, but uh, we do worry about the appearance of the site. So a great tip is whatever platform you're on, we're going to hear about Pianola in a moment and talk about BridgeWebs later. Uh, they've got themes that generally look very good, so take full advantage of them. Um, and another tip, when you're adding content to websites, resist the temptation to copy paste from Word into the site. It often messes up the formatting. So uh, we recommend, you know, paste into Notepad or text edit first and then copy it from there to remove all the formatting. You usually get a better result using the HTML formatting than whatever word comes up with. Uh, avoid just... long lines, very important. Um, we find it very difficult with a long line to focus as one line goes from uh, the end of one line to the beginning of the next. So just uh, little common sense things. One uh, thing, can I just put in for a second? One thing I will say, if you're using Word, <clears throat> you can copy and paste as plain text, so it pastes it in without formatting. Yeah, well, that works as well. Yeah, that works as well, absolutely. The important thing is not to have those uh, office formats. It does its best to look good on the Word, but it always gets it slightly wrong, so I uh, really recommend that. Um, so summary here, uh, take the website seriously. It really matters. What are your key messages? Make them test stand out. Uh, make sure you test on smartphones and tablets. Uh, have a prominent Learn Bridge Now link and ask us for help if you'd like um, our panel to put that in. Um, and keep working at it. It's not print. You can change it anytime you like. Um, so uh, you can experiment a bit, try things out and improve. Uh, OK, that's uh, all for the moment. I'd like to hand over now to James from Pianola, who's going to tell us a bit about the Pianola offer. Hi, everybody. Give me one second and I'll share my screen. Hi, everybody. So, uh, hi, I'm James from Pianola. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I started Pianola 11 or 12 years ago primarily with the purpose of helping clubs with their membership database, emailing players, trying to shift away from using spreadsheets to manage their memberships and trying to use their own email program to email players and, um, and really improve the communication between the club and players. So we have unparalleled membership management in terms of uh, knowing exactly how many members you have and who's paid up and when their membership expires and what membership category they're in. We also have a real-time integration with the EBU. So when you add a new member to your club in Pianola, it automatically adds them to your club on the EBU's database as well. You can even, if you get a brand new player, join the club who isn't a member of the EBU, you can add them to Pianola and join them to the EBU at the same time. And it generates that EBU number and that comes back down into Pianola for you. Uh, also results when you upload a game, if you upload the, the UMS or the P2P file into Pianola, we submit it to the EBU for you. So it saves you a job there. And um, we also retrieve everybody's latest NGS and rank information each night. And you can use that for targeting emails. So you can, if you've got a beginner class, you can target that to people with a low NGS. If you've got something more advanced, you can target it to players with a higher NGS. And that's, that all happens uh, in real time and it's integrated with the EBU so you never have to do anything to maintain that information. So we offer targeted personalized emailing including results emails which are incredibly popular probably the most popular feature we ever developed was um, to uh, automatically email players with their results after, immediately after the director's uploaded the game and it's it's a personal email so it says this is what you scored this was your best board of the night this was your worst board of the night this is the average you got on the boards where you were declarer. This is the average you got on the boards where your partner was declarer, that kind of thing. We even tell people, based on the latest NGS, what's your standing within your club? Where do you rank within your club based on NGS information? Uh, we also have a partner finder, so increasing participation at the club. If you've got somebody whose job it is to uh, find partners, and that's a manual process, encourage people to use the automatic partner finder and you'll find uh, participation increases. And we've got an incredibly simple website builder, which I'm going to show you in a second. But it's also worth noting that everything that we build 
is fully GDPR compliant, which is super important for you to pay attention to. You need to know that your data, it's personal information. It's very important that this is stored safely and securely and Pianola out of the box just gives you that, um, that protection. So I'm gonna show you uh, a couple of websites built using Pianola. And um, this is Bristol Bridge Club. Now, Tim mentioned about the importance of having what's called a, res a responsive web design. I, if somebody's looking at this on a phone and Tim's absolutely right, when we look at the stats, we see that most people these days are using phones or particularly iPads to, to browse the, the web instead of desktops or laptops. So if you were viewing this website on the phone, it would automatically, do you see how the design automatically adjusts so it looks good on a phone, just one column? And if you're looking at it on a larger device, the design automatically adjusts. Our websites have things such as latest news. As Tim mentioned, it's very, very important to keep your website updated, keep it refreshed, have new information. And the benefit of adding news stories is that you're constantly refreshing and building out your site because old stories stay there. Just like if you visit your favorite newspaper website, all the old stories will be there plus the new ones. And that's really good for getting search engines to think this is a good site. It's got quality, fresh information. It's a good site to, to show people who are looking. Um, and we also have some other features such as, you know, how to find us, um, automatically have a Google map. You can even put in a little street view. So this shows exactly where the Bristol Bridge Club is, so anyone who's not been to the club before can actually see where they're going before they get there. So that's Bristol. I'm gonna show you now Leeds Bridge Club. I'm, I live in Leeds, I'm a member of this club, and I have the ability to edit this site. I've been given permission by the Leeds Bridge Club to edit their website. And so I want to show you just how incredibly simple that is, because our goal with everything that we build with Pianola is to make it absolutely simple for anybody, regardless of their background or experience. We want to make it so that anybody who wants to volunteer and help run your club is able to do so, even if they have no experience of, of running uh, a website or sending emails or doing any of the other things we offer. So this is Leeds Bridge Club. I've logged in and I have this edit mode available to me. And if I switch on the edit mode, you'll see those yellow bars appear at the top of each of those blocks. And those yellow bars contain two buttons, an edit button and a, a little crosshair. And that little crosshair allows me to just pick something up and move it. It's as simple as that. I'll put it back. And, and everything you do is instantly live on the internet. Suppose I wanted to update this information here. I click on this edit button here very simple window pops up, <clears throat> just like a word processor. You can change the text here, you can insert images, you can have links. And again, everything that you do is instantly published onto your website. So it's not uh, as if you're going into one page to edit the content and looking at a different page to see how it appears. With, with Pianola, you literally go to the, the page that you want to edit and you do it right there. Um, so I'm just going to show you a couple more things. Uh, the emailing I mentioned with Pianola, because we have all of this information available, you know, your members are probably not likely to visit your website all that often. Uh, it's great for new people, people looking for a specific piece of information, but more often the communication between you, you and your members will be from you emailing them. And so Pianola allows you to send emails either to all of your current members or here's an example of one that was just sent to the current committee members. Here's one that was sent to a group of students. Uh, if I scroll down, here's one sent to the Yorkshire League players. Here's one, an event was canceled, Relax Bridge was canceled in March. And this email went just to the people who regularly play in that event. So it didn't go to the whole club, bothering people who never show up at that game. It just went to the people who are likely to show up for that game. So it's a really good way of... Your emails. Um, I'll just go back to my presentation. Uh, so just to kind of sum up um, a few things, for EBU clubs, we offer a 12-month free trial. So normally any club who starts using Pianola can try it free of charge for three months. For the EBU, because we want to, we've always 
work very closely with the EBU, the ACBL in America, the ABF in Australia, the NZB in New Zealand. We always want to work really closely with our national bridge organisations because we see them as obviously key to the future of bridge and the survival of bridge. So uh, for EBU clubs, you get a 12 month free trial, it's fully featured. You can use all of the features in the product. If at the end of that 12 months, you decide it's not for you, you just walk away, we delete your data. There's no commitments, but we actually have very few clubs walk away because um, the product's so good. You pay for it through a small annual or monthly subscription. It includes all the club features. Um, and there are some optional features for players which allow them to get extra analysis of their performance, to see how they're doing when they're declaring versus when they're defending, to see are they matching the best in field with their bidding or is it their card play that's letting them down? So especially for the kind of new intermediate be uh, beginner level players who are so crucial to the future of our game, Game Over Plus is a fantastic tool. It allows them even to replay hands that they played in the club and it will show them card by card how they could have made more tricks. Um, so that was all I wanted to, was that 10 minutes, Tim? I tried to rattle through. Um, I hope I didn't overshoot. That is about 10 minutes, James. And thank you so much. And uh, yeah, just, uh, I think, I'm um, not sure if you mentioned, but you can, of course, use Pianola alongside Bridgewebs. It's not necessarily either or. Yeah, um, absolutely. Lots of our clubs do that. We have, yeah. we have lots of clubs who use Pianola for the membership management, the emailing, partner finder, that kind of thing. Um, but they've already got a website they're happy with. It could be a Bridgewebs website. It could be another website. Um, Pianola works really well, whether you want to use our website builder or whether you want to use somebody else's yeah. website builder. Um, there's a, a question for you in, in, in the chat, um, whether Pianola uh, users get an email domain as part of the package. And if you can answer that one quickly. So you would want to get your own email domain. We don't want to own your domain. It's a bit like a mobile phone number. Your mobile phone number is yours. And you can choose to take that number to O2 or to Vodafone or to 3 or any of the providers. So, so the domain is yours and, and we will help you if you need help to register a domain. Once you've registered a domain, you're in control of it. And if you choose to point that domain at a Pianola website, that's great. If you choose to point that domain at a BridgeWebs website, you have that option. If you want to point that domain at your own website, you got built completely separately. But it, keep, it leaves you in control. So it allows you to choose the website provider that you like and point your domain to that. So we will help you with that, absolutely. We, you know, we help our, our customers with this kind of thing. We're probably much more familiar at doing that than you might be. Um, so we'll definitely hold your hand during that process. But uh, registering a domain is incredibly cheap, typically five to 10 pounds a month. And as I say, you, you should do that yourself so that you're in control of it. And then you just simply choose do we want to use Pianola for our website? Do we want to use BridgeWebs? Do we want to use somebody else? You have control over that choice. Okay, thank you, Jay. So there's a few more questions in the chat. I think we'll, um, maybe you could answer in the chat or we'll look at them later. We don't want to take uh, too much time right now, but we do want to look after everybody's questions. Yeah, I'll, I'll um, answer some questions by text whilst uh, you're carrying on presenting, if you like. That's great. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, I want to talk about BridgeWebs. Um, and um, I know that um, a lot of clubs use BridgeWebs. We think it's fantastic. Um, it is uh, quite a big topic, so we're just gonna scratch the surface in a way, but hopefully give people some ideas and also some pointers as to uh, what we can do um, after that. Um, I don't think BridgeWebs needs any introduction, but it is an amazing service. Um, and um, a club without a website can sign up to BridgeWebs and be running up and running after a few minutes. So probably the same is true at Pianola, but um, uh, the big attraction of BridgeWebs is that the essentials of publishing uh, a session schedule um, and, and the results later um, and all that stuff is all handled for you. Uh, and it integrates with scoring software like um, EBU score and, and ScoreBridge and so on. So um, it, it is a fantastic service. I, I do need to add a couple of things. Uh, one is that the EBU, and I think a large part of the Bridge community is full of thanks and admiration for the Bridge Web Service. Um, we do particularly thank Ben Hughes, who's the primary developer and his staff, and also John and Miriam Gocha, who provide the Bridge Solver online component that has uh, double dummy results, results analysis and playback, um, which is hosted on Bridge Webs. 
Uh, and second, we did, of course, invite Bridgewebs to present at this seminar. Uh, and for various reasons, they were not able to do so. But we do work closely with them. We use the service uh, for our own results. Uh, we also provide bridge news available to every club on Bridgewebs. Now, the big question, how can we improve uh, your bridge website? So um, let's just um, look at some of the pros and cons. Um, big advantage, very easy to get started. Uh, bridge club sites, bridge web club sites tend to look a bit the same um, and that's got good and bad aspects. It's quite good that people can find their way around if they know other bridge web sites. It does make it that bit harder to stand out. Bridgewebs is not always brilliant on mobile, um, given the decline of the home PC in favour of smartphones and to some extent iPads and tablets, that's a shame. Um, and Bridgewebs can seem a bit inflexible, but there are some workarounds, so we're going to talk about that. Um, uh, in preparation for this seminar, um, we I, I looked at our, our own club website in Winchester, um, and um, as you can see, it looked... Um, you know, not too bad on desktop um, and really not that great on mobile. You know, you scroll down, you get the information, but the first impression on the phone, not that great. Um, and uh, this is what um, the new newly revised site looks like. It's uh, kind of not dramatically different, but there's quite a few little tweaks to it. And I think it's a bit easier to read and a bit clearer and a bit more, um, a bit more modern looking. Um, and, um, you know, we've got the latest results. Uh, Learn Bridge in Winchester is more prominent. We've got a clearer font. We've got a nicer headline. Um, we've got the results and the calendar are above the fold just about um, there. And here's our new mobile view. Um, so that, to my mind, that's a quite a big improvement. Um, we've got um, the key message up there and we've got quick links at the top to the latest results to the calendar. Uh, and to information about where to find the club, which was sort of the three things that we picked as being super important. Um, so uh, how do you get the most out of BridgeWebs? Um, well, let's um, look a bit about what BridgeWebs is. It's a content management system. Um, you may have come across other content management systems. The EBU site, for example, uses one called Drupal. Uh, a very popular one is called WordPress. And um, so too is a site like um, Pianola. Is ultimately, it's a content management system. It manages your content. Um, and the unit of content in BridgeWebs is called a news item. It doesn't have to be news. Any item is called a news item, pretty much, uh, if it's not results. Um, and uh, those news items, uh, the layout of them is determined by the, the scripts and so on that run uh, it within BridgeWebs. Um, uh, and that layout is modified by the options and the theme that you set. Um, there is a fair amount of freedom to kind of do your own thing in BridgeWebs and not use the built-in formats. Um, but when you do that, you also take a bit of a risk because you're more on your own. Um, and um, you can't really blame BridgeWebs if you do something a, a bit out of the ordinary and then it doesn't quite look like, you know, they, they have a system that, that works. Um, and if you depart from it, which you might have good reasons to do, you need to take responsibility for that. Um, so here's a tip. Um, find a website you like um, and steal some of its ideas. Um, I, I thought, um, I mean, there's lots of lots of lovely Bridge websites out there. Um, so uh, don't um, assume that uh, I've picked this one because it's absolutely the best, but I do think it's a nice site. Um, so we, we do have um, one or two people here from Oxford. Um, I don't know if um, if Richard Sills, would you be willing to say a little bit about um, just how difficult it was to get a bridge website that looks nice? Oops, let's go back to that. Right. Not essential. If yeah. um, no, no I, I'm not the best person to say to um, uh, to answer that one because I don't in fact look after our website. Um, uh, it's it's been designed uh, by other people, so I could take no credit. And I can't really offer advice. All right. Thank, thank you, Richard. I, I know I, I was hoping to speak to, to Brian. I think um, he's yeah, very, Brian Mills. I'm not sure whether he's he's yeah, yeah, he's, he's very busy with documents. other things. So I don't think he could make it, unfortunately. But right. yeah, but I mean, the tip the tip really is that um, if you find a, a site that you like, um, it's um, 
uh, look at it carefully and see what they've done and, you know, see what uh, it will take to, to do that on your own site, the things that you like about it. Um, and uh, a lot of us are quite helpful. Um, you know, if you say, well, I love the way you've got that green background and no board around those um, panels on the right, then um, perhaps they will tell you how they did it, you know, and you can do something similar on your own site. Um, so um, let's talk a little bit about how bridge webs work. Um, the, the, the default layout um, is that it has three columns um, on the full desktop view, and then that collapses uh, as you make the screen smaller to two and then one column on a narrow screen. Um, and I do think the three column layout is the best choice, um, but here's a, 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 an important tip. As the screen narrows, uh, bridge webs will keep the order of the articles, which is left, middle, right. Uh, and what that means is that when you go to one column on mobile, those articles that you put in the left box, which on the desktop were kind of quite out of the way because they're below the menu, suddenly become the top articles. Um, and that might not be what you really hoped for. Um, so uh, the answer is to be very cautious about left box articles on bridge webs. Um, and uh, either have um, uh, very short ones or, or even none, or you can you can remove the less box completely in settings. I'll show you how to do that later. Um, and that might be quite a good plan. You can't remove the menu though without some hackery, which I will also tell you about later. Um, so second big thing with bridge webs, um, check your images. Um, pictures are really vital for an attractive site. Um, but um, a, a large image can really mess up your website. Um, and um, uh, the, the, the thing here is that when you insert an image into bridge webs using the built-in tools to add a picture, um, which is in the menus at the top above a, a news item, those images are automatically resized when the screen gets smaller. Um, and you can even add multiple images there. Um, there's a, a pictures option. You can add multiple images and they get shown in the slideshow. Um, but if you want more flexibility of a layout, you perhaps want to add images in the source of the news item itself. There's an add, add image on the toolbar. Um, those images that you add there uh, will not be resized automatically. Um, and um, a large wide image in a news article that doesn't get resized will really mess up the site. Uh, we had exactly this actually on one of our own bridge websites at the EBU. We were scratching our heads, why is this chopped off and not looking right? Um, and the answer was it was a large image that we'd put in um, and uh, it was really messing up the layout. Um, so if things are behaving strangely and you can't figure out what's wrong, uh, check the images. Okay, so here's another bridge webs tip. Um, this left hand menu in bridge webs um, is very handy for navigation and looks fine on a desktop site, um, but um, it does become rather dominant on smaller screens. Um, and um, uh, that indicates that it pays you to keep the top number of top level items on that menu uh, quite few in number. Um, and Bridgeworth makes it very easy. There's a, a move right option, which makes um, a menu item a sub menu, in which case it doesn't then appear uh, so prominently um, on a mobile device uh, when you've just got that menu at the top, for example, uh, on a smaller screen. So I definitely recommend that you consider having fewer menu items at the top and more sub menus. Um, so we put, for example, on our own website, we've got supervised play rotor and we put that as a sub menu information rather than top level um, so that the menu itself doesn't uh, immediately take up so much room. Uh, there's also some interesting options for menus in bridge webs. Um, there's even a beta version that has an option to show the menu along the top of the screen. I uh, haven't done a lot of experimentation with that, but it could be interesting. Um, and uh, using a hack, I'll show you later, you can disappear the menu in completely on small screens. Um, and uh, that might be worth considering because I do think it makes it difficult to have a nice mobile site um, if it's um, in its default. Uh, in its default position. Um, another great bridge webs tip 
Um, there's a hand of the week option, which is completely built in. So we're talking about having fresh uh, content on our site. Well, bridge players are very interested in bridge hands. Um, why did one person make that slam and everyone else went down, you know? So uh, here's, um, here's the tip. You just go to your news item, you do add hand, um, and uh, it really is a super facility. You can provide a commentary, a double dummy analysis is built in, uh, people can replay the hand, um, you can have a hidden answer if it's a question like, um, you know, what do you have to leave to make this contract? Um, and you can easily uh, select a hand from a recent bridge session. Uh, so I think this is a lovely feature. Uh, it does take a bit of work. Someone's got to do the work to think about the hand and, and provide the commentary, and someone's got to know enough about bridge to do a good job as well. Um, but um, I think that's a really nice feature that not every club uses. Um, okay, another thing about BridgeWebs, um, it um, BridgeWebs actually is continually being updated, um, and it has different versions. Um, but clubs do not get the latest version automatically. Uh, there is a good reason for that. Um, it is possible that if you get the latest version that something that you've done will break and you'll want to, oh no, go back to the old one, you know, which you can actually do. You can, you can try out a new version and go back if necessary. In my experience, um, the updates work fine and it doesn't break anything and it does provide new features. Um, so I think um, that it is worth keeping it up to date and upgrading. Um, and you can do that automatically. If an upgrade is available, you log on, you just say, Give me the latest update. Um, uh, similarly, there is um, a new option uh, for viewing results that people can choose as a classic and a new and so on. It's worth trying the new things. They usually are better um, and uh, recommend that. Uh, so sixth um, tip for bridge websites. These are really important options um, and um, they're box options in the settings. So there's various settings in bridge webs. Um, and uh, this is settings, options, um, and it gives you options for the left and right box. Uh, we talked about the left box a bit earlier and how it can be a bit of a problem. Um, so um, one thing which I think is quite nice is if you choose the option that says calendar slash results, rather than separate boxes for calendar and results, um, then you get uh, the calendar and the results appearing in a double, double two thin columns which uh, does help because they're both super important, um, high on our list of priorities for the site. Um, and uh, this means you can get them both visible, what we call above the fold immediately to view. Um, so I think that's uh, a good thing to consider. Um, and um, just to emphasize, making some careful selections here has a big influence on the appearance of the site. Um, so uh, recommend studying those carefully and trying things out. Um, okay, now here's another tip. Um, sometimes you might want to have a page that doesn't have the bridge web's appearance at all. It's completely custom. So you need to be reasonably competent at laying out a, a web page if you do that. Um, but you can actually make that part of your site. Um, so if you design a page like that, um, maybe a special one to advertise an event or maybe just a nicely designed page that um, uh, highlights um, what you do for bridge beginners or something, um, then you can do that. Um, and you would design that separately, and then you would upload it as a document in BridgeWebs using the Documents tab. Um, now, BridgeWebs has some facilities for automatically displaying documents, and they appear in a frame. Um, but if you want to, you don't have to use that frame, you can actually just include a, an immediate link to the document. Uh, so if you wanted, you know, a super custom bridge website, you could upload lots of custom pages of your own and make them links um, and just use the default bridge webs, you know, for the home page and for the results. Um, um, if you use custom pages like this, um, you need to make sure that people can still navigate the site. So you're going to have to have a link back to the home page. Um, and uh, so you need a bit of experience to do this, but it's worth knowing that you don't have to just be uh, use the bridge web layout system on all the pages if you don't want to. So another tip. Um, now, this is a bit more advanced, but um, if you um, have explored web development at all, you'll know that CSS styles are really, really powerful for determining how a page looks, both the typography and the layout um, of a page. 
Um, and uh, you can actually add styles to BridgeWebs pages. Uh, you, we are a bit in the realm of hacks here, but um, you know the results may well be worth it. Um, and there's a couple of ways to add CSS styles. Um, if you go to the source view in a news item, you can add uh, styles there. Um, I can help with the technical details if you're interested. Or you can even add a link to an entire CSS library. So Bootstrap is a really good library. Um, and um, you can add a link um, in the source of a news item. Just do it one on a page because you don't want multiple links to that page. Um, but uh, that does get you some quite nice typography and it gets you some um, uh, new options that are really useful for layout. Uh, actually, we did that on the Winchester Club site. If you saw that the, the fonts looked a bit nicer, that was because we we're using the Bootstrap um, CSS styles for them, um, which you know, I think are nicer than the building ones. Um, but you do have to be careful with this sort of thing because it's uh, there's no guarantee that if you link to something big like Bootstrap that you might mess up something that's in the bridge web's layout system. So one has to be take responsibility and you know if something doesn't work, um, take it out. Um, but um, it, it does add a lot of value. Um, and um, yeah, so more advanced stuff. Uh, you can, and this is built into BridgeWebs, you can add JavaScript um, to BridgeWebs pages. So why would you do that? Well, this is actually how we hid the menu on a mobile screen, which I think um, is, is quite a nice feature. Um, it's the script for that is only about 10 lines long, so it's not super complicated. And again, I'm happy to share if anyone wants to try that. Um, but BridgeWebs do warn, it's for experienced users. You know, you might break something um, and, um, you can't sort of go to BridgeWebs and say, I'm using this custom script and I've got a bug somewhere. Can you fix it for me? They're just going to say, don't use the script. You know, So <laughs> no reason why they should uh, help you at that sort of level. We, we are a bit on our own, um, but I do think that the results can be really worthwhile. Um, so um, the script that we use, for example, it hides the built-in menu and then it shows the buttons, the quick buttons for latest results and calendar and so on. Very, very simple. Um, but it does, um, to my mind, make quite a big improvement in mobile views. Um, so uh, Oxford Bridge Club actually has a really advanced script that does um, search of the website. It's um, super interesting to, if you're slightly technical, you know, you can do amazing stuff with this. Uh, I think the takeaway really is that um, there's not much that you actually can't do with bridge webs. Um, it is very simple to get going, but if you do have these advanced cases, there are ways of doing pretty much anything, um, provided you take responsibility for it. And of course, you still get all the advantages of the bridge web results, ana results analysis and things, which is why we use it. Um, so, uh, summary here um, study the bridge webs help. There is a help system in bridge webs, um, and that's quite good documentation. Um, ask other users, there's a bridge webs forum. There's also an EBU club forum, which um, I'll put a link in the chat, or maybe Jonathan could do that um, if he hadn't already. Um, ask other clubs how they got the results that you like. Um, and um, I'm just going to stop the share now. I know there's been a few comments in the chat, so let's just see what people come up with. Um, and um, so someone said, how do you get from the old Winchester Bridge Club layout from mobiles to the new one? Well, mainly it's a script. Um, someone's asked, mainly it's a script and I can share that script with people. Um, uh, but also the, the, the CSS styles that we link to make a difference as well. Um, and uh, so one of the things there is that if you want a responsive image that is in your content as opposed to in the Bridge Web's um, um, options, um, then you can use with uh, Bootstrap, you can use a thing called IMG hyphen fluid, and that resizes it beautifully um, as you resize your page, you know, so things like that really help. Um, um, someone's just pointed out, change it, you can change the colors of the site. Um, and uh, that's a really nice thing to do if you understand about colors. Um, and uh, there are some built in color options, or if you're good with colors, you can make it really fresh by choosing nice colors that work together. Uh, you can also make the site look really horrible by choosing horrible colors. So, you know, make sure you know what you're doing. But yes, good tip. Um, yeah, someone's pointed out that it can be difficult to get an image on BridgeWebs that it will accept. There is another option there, which is you can upload the image elsewhere and link to it. Um, 
if you uh, use a, one of those sites that exists for like post IMG is one, you can post an image to a site uh, which is designed for linking from social media, and then you can link to it from your bridge website. So that's an option for images if you can't get them to behave in bridge webs itself. Um, hand of the week functionality, go to a news item and do add hand, and there it is. Um, is it possible to take the site offline so anyone clicking doesn't see the mess? I don't think it is, but I think what you can do is start a new trial site maybe and use that for some experimentation. Um, uh, you can also do some little workarounds. When I was messing around with our club site, I, I, I set up a test page that wasn't in the menu and tried stuff on that. Um, no one was going to see it. I mean, it was technically published, but you know, no one was going to look at it. So. Uh, so you can do that. I, I just had a, a few questions about uh, social media, um, and uh, I, I think we realised that it was going to be, it, we were going to do justice to social media as well as websites um, um, in one seminar. So uh, we're just going to briefly touch on social media. Um, it is uh, a fascinating topic in its own right. Um, I just uh, wanted to, I know we've got Sue Maxwell here, we've got uh, Oliver Cohen here. Um, uh, Sue, just uh, tell us briefly, how important has social media been to getting students for your courses and what, what are your tips on, uh, on doing that? Uh, hi, yeah, hello everybody. Um, I, I think uh, more and more and more now and uh, I've always uh, used, um, um, uh, one of the latest players to come on board that I've found uh, very useful is uh, Next Door. Um, and um, is considerably uh, cheaper than Facebook too. And it's very, very local. Um, so I actually use both of those. Um, I think uh, absolutely ideally, I, I'd quite like to learn how to link my bridge, bridge site to, the, uh, to both of those actually. Um, uh, that would be quite useful for, for me to know. Um, Certainly, uh, you need to say the most important thing is that you need to stay on top of it. Um, I think it's been said somewhere else in this presentation uh, that you need to uh, stay on top of it and coordinate your website and absolutely everything else uh, uh, together. The most important time to, um, uh, to, for recruitment is for your two main start for bridge teaching which is in September and some start as well in January and uh, that's the time when you want to put the big splash on the right very very prominently with a lot of lovely graphics in, in the center of your website and so your um, when people have picked this up on social media they'll click onto your website and there is your big splash straight away click information um, and then uh, 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 that will click you through the information about your courses, which is very important, but also click through for further and better details from the, the teacher. And then, as I say, importantly, is to actually keep on top of it during these key recruiting times, which is August is your biggest recruiting time for your September, October courses. And over the Christmas holiday, learn to play bridge in the new year uh, for the January courses. Thanks. That's super helpful. Thank you. So I, I can't emphasize enough what, what, what Sue has just told us about keeping on top of things. Um, there is no magic to it. You can set up a Facebook page for your bridge club, think job done, let's sit back and it will do no good whatsoever. Um, you, you have to give people a reason to actually come and look at your social media content. And that means keeping it fresh uh, and posting things and engaging with people. Same with Twitter or anything else, uh, Instagram, you know, so um, it's better, in my opinion, better not to have a presence at all than to have one that looks stale and out of date. Um, but obviously, if you can make it work, you've got the time, you've got the resources to, to do that, then it can pay big dividends. Um, Oliver, just quickly, um, anything in your experience about uh, tips on, on, on using Facebook or other social media effectively for um, recruiting or promoting events? Um, I, I think in my experience, it's just keep, like I said, keep it updated. Um, I guess tying in the 
Facebook theme with an old favourite TV character. Um, on Facebook, we have lots of friends. Uh, as Garfield the cat said, use your friends wisely. Um, ultimately, there are people I am friendly with on Facebook who have three or 400 friends who I don't know. If 15 of those play bridge, that's access to, uh, and I've got you know 300 people in the same position, that's four and a half thousand people. If 300 people got 15, I do, I don't know. It's getting access to tell them what's going on. Mine is slightly different because although I am a club, I'm also running events both online and face to face. Um, but again, it, it's just spreading the word out there. It's keeping things updated. It's keeping things positive because again, you will people will come across things. Not non bridge players will come across it. And you want to make it look attractive, look appealing. You're, well, I'm thinking of a, taking on a new hobby. Oh, this bridge thing looks pretty cool. These look, I'm having a good laugh. Um, so just really trying to do it that way. Brilliant. That's really helpful. Thank you, Oliver. Uh, if you, if your mem, if your main membership list is in BridgeWebs, um, then you will need to ensure that if you add a new player in BridgeWebs, um, then it's also added to your membership list in my EBU. So if you're logged into my EBU as a club, you've got session statements members across here. And this members is the official list from the EBU perspective of who is a member of your club. And this is the people that we will recognize as club members um, and uh, will we'll, we'll give them all the benefits of membership. Um, so this is a test club, but it will work for these purposes. You can see this test club has 21 members. Um, so going to our bridge website here, which I will use. So you, for membership things, you'd go to administration and web administration and just log in there. Um, and you would then go to membership. Now at the moment, this club has no members and that's because I just wanted to quickly demonstrate if you, if you want to update Bridge webs from the MyEBU list, um, how you would do that. So you can do that very, very easily by just downloading from MyEBU as a CSV. So if you click that, and you can see it's uh, downloaded this file here, member 38. So just open that. Um, and then we just need to rename this column to first name, if I can spell, and surname. We don't need these columns at all. And I'm not sure if the order matters, but we will just put it in the order I think it's expecting, just to be on the safe side. Um, and if I just save that, and then in, in uh, BridgeWebs, if I go to Import Export and choose File, that CSV file I just saved and import. Um, and it says import file found 21 records. So I can confirm that. But I, the, the more important thing I was trying to demonstrate is if you've added a member in in BridgeWeb. So if I just add myself quickly as a demonstration, put my EBU number in, which is down here somewhere. Now, if you have entered your EBU details into BridgeWeb, which you can do by going to um, settings and site details, and there's a box here for your um, EBU number and password. Uh, that's the club EBU number and password. And if you then go back to membership um, and go to NGS list here, you will see that it will now, it's now comparing what the EBU list has, which is this column here, um, with what BridgeWebs has. So um, at the moment, the only member on BridgeWebs is me. Um, and you can see that I'm not on the list on EBU, which is why it's blank here. So 
this is very useful because if you've added some new members on on Bridgewebs, you can then go down this list, see which ones are blank, um, and you can then just go and add them on my EBU. So if I now come to my EBU, and add myself here, then click the update NGS. You can see you can see now that uh, it, it's now filled in that EBU number and it's got my grade as well. But but you can see now that that that, that person has been added. Um, these ones are in red because they're missing on the bridge website. So normally they'd all they'd all be grey if if they're all in both places. Um, but that's just an easy way to to see to see that the people who are in your bridge web are also on on EBU because it is important that that when you're adding people or removing people, um, that, that, that it's done on EBU, so we have the, the correct data. The, the other thing to quickly mention is the player database in EBU score. So for people who use EBU score, and I mean, Scorebridge has something similar, um, you've got this screen which says player database. Um, this is a blank one because I just created it. Um, um, now here you will normally have a list of everyone who has played in your club. Um, and it's less important that this is kept up to date because it's just, um, it's just people who have played um, and it may well include visitors who have played as well. Um, so it is less important. Um, but if you want to, then you can um, think that with BridgeWebs there is a facility. So if you go to player management here um, and if you say, Import P PD as player database from BridgeWebs. Um, oh, one sec, this is stuff I've missed, which is that in BridgeWebs you've got this is your membership database, but you've then got the player database as well. So we need to go to player database. Um, um, okay, so there is actually someone there. So the the, you can see here you've got your um, B is the BridgeWebs membership database and S is the scoring database. So um, if I say synchronize BridgeWebs to player database, um, that will that will add me because I'm the, the the new member to the scoring database as well. So if I say OK um and show all entries because it's just showing me the differences if i show all entries it's now saying that i'm in the bridge mate database and the scoring database so if i now go to bridge webs and import the player database which is the scoring database from bridge webs um it will add it will add those two players that are listed there the boss and myself to to the ebu to the ebu score players list so mm -hmm. Jonathan, may, may I just for a comparison uh, just show the equivalent features in Pianola? Yes, sure, sure. Um, go, go, go ahead. I'll... You're muted, James, for some reason. James, we, we, you're muted, James, we can't hear you. Hi, 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 sorry, sorry. Yeah, our view is that when you involve humans in this kind of process, you are inviting oversights, mistakes, errors. So the way it works in Pianola, does somebody want to just give me that EBU number? You can do minus 412770. Okay, so Jonathan joins the club. We put his EBU number in. We click search. It's done a search on the EBU database. If he's joining Leeds Bridge Club, I just click Add Jonathan. I can populate his record with any other information that we know about him. Um, we only get certain information back from the EBU. That's primarily the EBU number, the first name, the last name, and the town and city. But you can populate all the other information that you've been given, BBO username, Bridge Club Live username, uh, email, everything else. And as soon as I save this record to Pianola, 
it will automatically update the EBU. Equally, we've got an export function out to either Scorebridge or we need to update that, it's still called Jeff Smith, but you can export to EBU score, Scorebridge, that's an Australian program. So we've tried to make these things so the human involvement is minimized as much as possible because it's humans that make mistakes. Computer code does what computer code says it does. And as long as there's no bugs in the code and the, there are no bugs, we've been running this for 12 years. So you, you, you will find far fewer headaches, I think, if you rely on a computer to do this for you. I just wanted to show that comparison, thank you. Thanks so much. Um, just to mention, someone has asked in the chat about uh, should the membership list master be in BridgeWeb's EBU or EBU score? Um, I think the important thing to recognise is that it's the EBU only looks at its own membership list for the sort of things that count like um, um, master point awards, NGS grading and those sorts of things. So uh, that is the list that has to be right, you know, for yeah. those things to work. Um, Pianola can synchronize with that list, which is great. It is, but it is the EBU database in the end that's being updated. So um, that in one sense is the most important list, um, but um, uh, you may have your own methods of keeping them in sync. I mean, that's uh, whether it's Pianola or whether it's some other method that might depend on another list somewhere in BridgeWebs or EBU score, that's fine, but it's the EBU list that is sort of the one that counts. Tim, can I just say something on that, which is that it's really important that clubs do that for uh, things like the NICO. Every year we have problems with clubs who want to enter a team in the NICO and they have members who have not been listed on the EBU database. Absolutely essential that they're there on the EBU database, otherwise we can't know that they were members at the appropriate time. So please do make sure that they're up to date. Yeah. I think some some clubs like to have BridgeWebs as the master list, and obviously they can then do emailing from BridgeWebs as well. Um, but that's what I was just trying to demonstrate with that NGS list. You can just see that everyone you have in BridgeWebs is also on the EBU list, and if anyone is missing, then then just quickly add them, and you can keep those two lists lists in sync. Right. Sorry for the for the technical issues. I will hand back to Tim. Yeah, thank you very much, Jonathan. Well, we've got to the end of our the formal part of our, our session. I mean, there are quite a few questions um, in the chat. Um, so I will just cast my eye down to see if um, anything we could answer there. But uh, also, this is your chance to ask questions either out loud or in the chat, and um, we will do our best to answer them or get back to you with an answer. One common question was, will there be a recording? Yes, there will be a recording and we will send you a link. Um, also happy to include the slides um, if uh, anyone wants those. So uh, if you, you've registered for this session, you will get an email with the links for those things in due course. Uh, Tim, I'd just like to say that I've been running the Bury Athenaeum membership databases now for about four or five years. And initially I did try and uh, create one master database and my efforts to use BridgeWebs as a master database never quite synchronized properly with EBU score. The, I was advised by Gwyn at Sir BridgeWebs that the creation of a member record started with EBU score. And from there, it was then exported to BridgeWebs. What I was trying to do on a regular basis, he says, wasn't the intention. The idea of uh, creating records in bridge webs and then exporting them to EBU score was to start up your database, but not as a continual update process. Uh, but I'm very interested in the Pianola offering because at the moment I manage it by uh, a, an Excel spreadsheet and I have several tabs on there, one in EBU format, one in BridgeWebs format, and one in EBU score format as CSV files. But our initial contact with a new member is at the Bridge Club, and the TD will create a new member. And from there, then I use that to generate the BridgeWebs records and the EBU record. Yeah, and I'll just show you very quickly, adding a new, if you get a brand new member, 
who's never been a member of the EBU, and you add them to Pianola, what we do first is we check, are there any people? It turns out there are lots of Joe blogs in the EBU, uh, but if none of these Joe blogs are the right Joe blogs, we can create a new record. You populate this with their name, their address, email, and then when you click this button, save and join to EBU, that automatically creates a new membership record on the EBU database with a brand new EBU number. We get that EBU number straight back, so you instantly know what that EBU number is. You can tell them their EBU number. It's stored in PNO, like they're automatically on your list at the EBU. So I, I think there, there really isn't a better way of um, automating the parts of this process that are prone to problems and human error. Thanks very much. Um, someone said, how do you use BridgeWebs to send emails? Um, anybody, has, has anyone used BridgeWebs for sending emails and can explain that for us? I can quickly try and demonstrate. Um, so if I uh, may quickly add an email address into my record. So you can, um, if we had, um, yeah, so you obviously you've got an email members button here. Um, uh, and and you can have you can have different groups of members, um, uh, so so you can send you you can choose who who will be receiving it, um, and, and obviously write your message. Um, so, but but yes, you you've got um, from from the membership you've got email members here. Okay, that's really useful. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, I just again mentioned we've got this club forum. We would love to see your um, questions in there. We can share things then with everybody rather than individual emails. It's always um, nice to broadcast things in that way. So do take advantage of the club forum, which um, we did link in the chat. I'll also include that in, our, in the email we send out to all the attendees today. Um, and um, look forward to hearing more about your websites and how we can improve them. Right, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, could you uh, send something about um, um, what you were talking about with CSS and that kind of stuff? I mean, I, I, I'm not very experienced, but I did beginners courses in CSS, uh, JavaScript, etc. So I would be quite interested in finding out how to do it. And yeah, try my hand at it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll share some information on that. I'd be glad to do okay, that. Okay. Thank you yes. very much. Yes. Yeah. I. I I think it's too difficult to do it right now uh, in the in the for everybody because it's quite detailed. But um, in particular, how to get rid of the menu on the mobile phone yeah. because I noticed the problem before. I mean, exactly. You know, yes. yes. So it will yes. be quite useful to add something else. Uh, and adding that script is actually really really easy. So I can okay. show you how to do that. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Hey, my, I I would just like to say. I mean, I I obviously found everything that everybody said fascinating and I I probably was able to understand maybe 60 percent of it um and I, I I just sort of really feel that um, more of these sessions um would be really really um useful um and and maybe to concentrate on less but do it do it kind of in in proper detail so that I go away saying actually I can go and do that because I'm I'm very aware, and I mean I, I do use Pianola, and I find it fantastic. Um, and you know James is exceptionally helpful, but I I'm very aware that I've got names here, there, and everywhere. And quite frankly, I don't have a list of my members. 
Yeah, uh, that that is is heard and understood completely. Um, so we need to do more on this. Um, I mean, we've got various things that we could do. We can have more of these sessions. Uh, we could have a face to face session if people could make it to I don't know Aylesbury or London or something. Uh, we could do videos. Uh, how to do X, Y, and Z. Um, maybe we need to do all of these things. But um, yeah, I, I completely hear you, and I. Uh, some people have said they found some of the details hard to follow, which I, I fully, you know, understand. Uh, it's um, uh, inevitably there's a bit of technology involved in websites. Um, try to keep that to the minimum, but some things you just need to 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 do it. Um, so um, the answer is do step by steps with you do this, you do that, you do the other, and then you get the result you want. I think that's the that's the sort of the the, the approach that we can take. Um, and you see, can I just say one of the things? I mean, I'm very very conscious of. I mean, I, I do run a reasonably large club, um, and at the moment I am getting people to pay me cash every time, and you know they're all asking me to do something um online and i know that there's a way of doing it well various ways of doing it but i don't know how to do any of them <laughs> yeah i think jonathan's got some information on that as well that we can um feed yeah. in yeah. Um, yeah. I okay, okay thank I you just, could i just mention brian mass a guy called uh, victor lesk um has developed a really good uh, program for turning your club into cashless it can handle table money and it can handle membership fees <laughs> and that also syncs with pianola so okay. Okay. Any time, if you it, it, it extracts everybody's play history from Pianola, so it can deduct from their balance, and when they top up their balance, you just do that by uploading your bank statements into Brian Mass, and it it tracks what money you've received from who. So have a look at Brian Mass. Victor's done a great job there, and we've collaborated with him on that, so that there's this two-way sync again. Trying to remove humans as much as possible from jobs like this is a really good goal. If I may chip in briefly, I'm from Thorpe Bay Bridge Club and we're using Square Pay, which either has a handset or you can have a tiny little handset that links via Bluetooth to mobile phones. We use that very successfully. So look up Square Pay too. Um, and at Alicana, we're using the attendance module from um, Bridge Webs, and there is a certain amount of manual work to do with that, but it's it's very easy and provides lots of information both for the members and for the treasurer. Tim, uh, David Adams here from Keyworth Bridge Club. I would support what Shana says. We use BridgeWeb's financial module for collecting table fees and memberships. And it, after a few ceiling problems, when it was first released during COVID, we've sorted it out and our financial controller finds it very useful. I didn't know whether there was anything similar, but James has made a comment about a complimentary uh, the software module that can be added on to Pianola. Um, I've got a couple, couple of questions and observations that I think are germane to what you're talking about. I appreciate and applaud your effort to try and bring everybody on the same page about this because it's quite important. It's very important to the future of clubs and to, to British communities all over. Um, it, it would be useful because many clubs are stretched with technology, technological skills and succession. If Organisations like Enola, BridgeWebs and other, other offerings that state what they can provide in the way of outsourced or managed services, that would be very useful to clubs because we can't, can't always manage our own domains to technically and some of the technical issues are beyond most of us. That would be a good, good step forward. I think implicit in this discussion is about how you provide the backup services of training, education and knowledge about how you provide people the route to playing bridge because it is not a simple task. We have tried to crack it in our region of South Nottinghamshire. It's not a, a one-stop shop, but I believe it's a quite a convoluted period. And if you just get people to come and visit your website and think they can sign up for bridge immediately, that's a false premise. So I think allied to what we'll be talking about is the whole training and education management process. Time for another day, but thank you for your time. Thank you, David. More good ideas for future events there as well. I'll just say, as far as Pianola's kind of uh, support services, we absolutely will hold your hand through all of these technical things, such as registering a domain and how you change your domain name records to point to a different website. That's that's something we offer our customers for, for no charge. Where we 
like to, we like to keep the boundary in the right place so so we won't register a domain for you because we don't want to own your domain it's not ours it's yours so we will kind of guide you as to you know this is how you do it because you need control of this domain long term we'll help you with that process but we will make sure that we can stay on the right line of who owns the domain to your bridge club because it shouldn't be us it should be you thank you Anyone else? Okay, well, thanks especially to James for coming along and telling us uh, about Pianola and other things. Um, and uh, thank you to all of you for coming and thank you for taking this seriously. I do think that there's a huge uh, amount that we can do as a community to improve our web presence and benefit all of us. Um, so, so hope hopefully we'll stay stay on track to do that uh, and we will help in any way we can um, Jonathan is club liaison I'm IT at the EBU and uh, don't hesitate ask your questions how do I do this you know and we will do our best to help um, so thank you very much everyone thank you Tim and Jonathan for organizing it as well thanks very much